Hello and welcome to the technical section of my YouTube channel. In this section we're going to discuss different aspects of private equity which could be considered technical and what I'm going to talk about today is about how we calculate a distribution waterfall for a private equity fund. So please let's get to it. So the topic today is the distribution waterfall which refers to how the um, exit proceeds of private investments would then be used to satisfy the different claims of the fund stakeholders. And it's called a waterfall because if we look at the um, diagram right there, you can see that it looks a little bit like a waterfall um, because of the different priorities. If you look at the orange and the green bar charts, it looks a little bit like a waterfall. So we've got on the left, in blue, these the exit proceeds of an investment you make. So when you sell an investment, and then firstly, you have to use that money to pay back the LPs their capital. And after that, you have to repay the management fees that the LPs provided to the GP to manage the fund. And thirdly, you have to repay LPs their cost of capital. So that's a little bit like paying interest on a deposit. Then the GP gets their first uh, bonus payment, if you like, because carried interest really is a bonus payment, and cash up is a form of carried interest. And then we're left with uh, uh, the profits, which then get split between the LPs as their profit, and then the carried interest of, of the GP. So that's what this chart is uh, expressing in a, in a visual form. Okay, so let's go to the... Um, Excel spreadsheet in which uh, I'm going to be going through the calculation of a simple waterfall. So let's start here at the top. We're going to look at the assumptions we've made, which are fixed. So firstly, let's assume this fi the, the fund is a 100 million euro fund. We assume that uh, the annual management fee paid is 2% on the 100 million. We assume that the fund's life is seven years. We have the hurdle rate, which is the percentage of interest payment for two LPs set at 6%. And those are, let's say, the, um, the kind of conditions of the fund, which are fixed before the fund starts. Then let's assume the following outcomes. That the total amount that actually invested in companies was 80 million, and that's quite common in private equity that you wouldn't actually invest the full amount of your fund. Firstly, we've also got to pay the management fees. So we'll assume 80 million is, is, is actually invested in the companies. And the fund's life has been set at seven years here. So at 2% a year for 100 million, that means the management fees paid out are going to be 14 million. And that's going to come out of the 100 million. So if we add up the 14 to the 80, that gives us 94. 4 million, which is actually spent, with 6 million left in reserve. Some people refer to it in this industry as dry powder. So that's, that's, the, that's a scenario. And let's assume the following outcomes of our investments, that um, the average period in, of our investment holdings was four years. So we had some investments which we held for three years before we sold them, and some other investments which we held for five years before we sold them and they average to be about four years. And let's assume that I've sold all the companies in my portfolio on the same day because this is a simplified calculation, and for that I get 200 million euros. So I've sold all the companies in my portfolio, I've got 200 million euros in cash, and now I have to satisfy the claims or the waterfall of distributions. So let's go down here to the second table on the spreadsheet. So firstly, you see here we have the exit proceeds of 200, which is that, that amount we just referred to. It turns out that's as a multiple of capital deployed, which is 200 divided by the 80 million, which was what originally deployed, is two and a half. So let's make our first payment. We have to give back the LPs their 80 million that they invested. So we give back LPs 80 million. And we've got 120 million left. So we can continue. We then have to give back the LPs the money they put up for the management fees, which is 14 million, so we give them that back. And I've got 106 million left. I then have to pay the LPs a certain amount of interest, 
which is re referred to as the preferred return, to reflect the fact they've had all their money stuck in the fund for an average of four years, which corresponds to the average of the periods the fund committed. And that gives me the preferred return, which is equal to the number of years, four years, at 6% um, multiplied by the 80 million of capital deployed plus the 14 million of management fees. I've simplified the calculation, which means basically I have to now give to the LPs 22.5 million uh, euros as a kind of interest payment. So if I pay them that, and I've got 83 million left. So I continue down my waterfall, and I now pay to the GP the first bonus payment, which is conventionally called a catch-up. And that's traditionally an amount which is set equal to either a quarter or fifth of the preferred return. So in this case, I've used a quarter. So we pay the GP 5.6 million euros as a bonus. And I've still got plenty of money left, 77.8 million. And now I get to the point of profit distribution. So I give the 77.8 million is given 80% to the LPs, which is 62 million, and 20% to the GP, which is 15.5 million. And so the total payout uh, to the LPs at the end is 180 million approximately, and to the GP is 21 million. So that, that's an example of a waterfall. So let me show you what would happen if, for example, we simply had less money to give away. So let's, say, let's assume that instead of 200 million, I got back 150 million. Now you see that um, we get to a point that um, we can still get through the waterfall. The, 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 the LPs still get their capital. They get their management fees back. They get their preferred return. The GP gets to catch up, but there's somewhat less profit to be distributed. And the GP ends up with 11 million. Let's go a bit lower. With 100 million, you see what happens here is that the LPs get their money back, they get their management fees back, they get their preferred return, only to a certain amount, which is going to be 22 million minus 560. So you see, as the, the amount of money gets lower, the amount, uh, the waterfall interrupts itself uh, somewhat earlier. So this is an example of how a waterfall, uh, a waterfall works.